Today we're going to talk about unreasonable generosity. In 1 Kings chapter 17, Elijah went to Zarephath, and as he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I do not have a single piece of bread in the house, and I only have a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of a jug. So I was just gathering a few sticks to cook the last meal, and then my son and I will die. So imagine being in the middle of a drought and a famine, and then a random stranger shows up asking for food. Kind of like if you have no food in your house and then company comes over unexpectedly. That's exactly what happened to the widow at Zarephath. She was down to her last meal. She planned to make one final humble dinner for her and her son when Elijah showed up requesting food. She initially declined seeing and listing all of the reasons why she couldn't, all the things that she lacked. Most of us would probably think, are you serious? I hardly have enough to feed me and my son. And now you, a grown man, wants me to make you food? That's crazy. Despite her dire situation, she decided to shift her perspective from what she didn't have to God's promise that he would always provide. Something truly miraculous happens when we shift our perspective from the things that we lack. Maybe it's the job that we don't have, maybe it's the house that we don't have or the car that we don't have, the family don't, we don't have, the relationship we don't have, to God who keeps his promises and always provides. And that's exactly what happened to the widow at Zarephath. God blessed her generosity. You see, God didn't just make sure there's enough food for her and her son for that day or enough food for her and her son while Elijah was in town. No, her little jar of flour, her jug of oil became a bottomless pit of God's blessings until the rain returned. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. True generosity isn't about how much we have, it really is about our willingness to trust God with what we do have. Sometimes we put qualifiers around our generosity. I'll be generous once God blesses me with a new car. I'll be generous when God blesses me with a million dollars. I'll be generous when God blesses me to fit into those pair of jeans that I used to fit into that I don't fit into anymore. But it's seemingly the smallest acts of generosity that can unlock the floodgates of God's blessings in our life. So the next time you're feeling like you don't have much to give, remember the widow's story. When you give generously in faith, you are always the real winner because God is faithful to provide and eager to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. So I'm gonna leave you with two questions. Are there any areas specifically in your life that you are struggling to trust God with? Maybe it is your finances, maybe it's your job, maybe it's your home, maybe it's your family. And with all those things in mind, what would unreasonable generosity look like in those areas? As you think about that, begin to ask God to show you areas of your life where you can be more generous, but also areas of your life where you can trust Him more. And make sure you ask God to reveal to you ways in which He's been unreasonably generous to you all along.